Today's Gospel is from Luke chapter 21, verse 25 to 28, 34 to 36. Jesus said to his disciples, There will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars. On earth nations in agony, bewildered by the clamor of the oceans and its waves, men dying of fear await what menace the world, for the powers of heaven will be shaken, and then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand erect. Hold your heads high, because your liberation is near at hand. Watch yourselves, or your hearts will be coarsened with debauchery and drunkenness and the cares of life. And that day will be sprung on you suddenly like a trap. For it will come down on every living man on the face of the earth. Stay awake, praying at all times for the strength to survive what is going to happen. And to stand with confidence before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, today's collect pretty much sets the tone for my reflection today, and by extension, the church's reflection throughout the world. The object of Christ's second coming is beautifully articulated in the third line of today's opening prayer, with righteous deeds at his coming. And it continues, so that guarded at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the eternal and heavenly kingdom. That is the objective of Christ's coming that we may be met in a state of righteousness, ready to embrace the glory that is that of the children of God, the sons and daughters of God, those made in his image and likeness, those who should possess his mind, his knowledge, his understanding, his wisdom, and his Holy Spirit to guide us through the years. In other words, the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ is ready a time of stewardship accountability as to recognize whether or not we have lived up to the principles of the demands placed upon us at baptism. When we renounce the devil, his works, his payments, his attractions, his lure, and everything else, that we would remain resolutely committed to being sons and daughters of God. That's a very tall order because it requires us to be obedient and humble like Christ. Obedience is a very difficult feat to attain because it requires us to surrender our entire being, mind, heart, body, soul, 
and spirit to the will of God and nothing else, regardless of what confronts us, we remain resolutely firm to our commitment. And we know that clustered by individualism, materialism, humanism, and a whole load of uh, ideologies that are confronting us today, that this is very tall because the mind strays from left to right and middle and the center looking for instant gratification and opportunities for growth, which they cannot offer, but only the grace of God can give us, as St. Augustine would tell us. Only in God is my soul at rest. We have models upon which we can build our life, our future, and our understanding. During this last week of the liturgical year, the readings were from the prophet Daniel. Three persons played a pivotal role in, this, in these first readings. Daniel, Hananiah, Mikhail, and Araziah. They were carried away from their native countries to live in the palace of Nebuchadnezzar, a very self-centered man. Egocentricity spells his entire character. And of course, he made himself a god. He has power. He could do whatever he wants. Who else can tell the king what to do? Only the king has authority. And kings are meant to be the symbol of righteousness, justice, peace, and right living. Now that can carry us overboard when we fail to understand our humanity. And I think I love Hebrews 5 verses 1 to 5 for this reason which reminds us that regardless of our given role among the people of God, whether priest or king, do not forget your humanity. Keep offering sin sacrifices for yourself and for your people. In that way, conscious of our human nature and the capability to fall into sin anytime, we will be careful not to defy ourselves. Nebuchadnezzar did this, and he wanted Daniel and Isaiah, Misael and Haraziah to worship him, to pray to him, offer incense to his statue. And he said, no. If you do that, we will feed you. We'll give you portions of food from the king's table. In other words, all of the guys had social, political, economic opportunities begging at their doors to be accepted for social upward mobility. And they said, no. If our righteousness becomes questionable, we will not surrender to the cheap gimmick that you're offering us. He went through the fire in the furnace, unscathed for the sake of their integrity and the righteousness that God is coming to judge us by. Never surrendered. Belshazzar, who is the nephew of Nebuchadnezzar, in his idiosyncrasies, went and plundered the temple and used the sacred vessels for his life of debauchery and what have you. You know, 
and the people were eating and drinking and the signs came and the handwriting came on the wall to say to him, your days are numbered and he couldn't read it. And he relied on the wisdom, the integrity, the righteousness of Daniel to interpret for him what God had in mind. When we are unrighteous, we face the consequences of our actions. And then we will fail to achieve and take possession of the heavenly kingdom that Christ is coming to build for us and is prepared for us. Today's first reading again is pointing us to see the days are coming, says Jeremiah chapter 33 verses 14 to 16. It is the Lord who speaks when I am going to fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time I will make a virtuous branch, not a decadent branch, but a virtuous branch grow, who shall practice honesty and integrity in the land, and Israel shall dwell in confidence. And this is the time, the name, the city will be called the Lord our integrity. These words are relevant to us today as they were for Israel of old. How do I come to that conclusion? Because the church in its modern times is called the new Jerusalem, the new Israel of God. And that's who we are. That's who God is coming to raise up. This is whom God is calling to run in his direction with a firm resolve for change. Not that he does not know the level at which we are now. In fact, as St. Peter says, He's been procrastinating and procrastinating and procrastinating because his love supersedes our human weakness so much. He wants no one to be lost and everyone to be saved. So he's taking his time. But a thousand years could be like a single day and a single day can be like a thousand years. So my dear friends, let us take this opportunity afforded us during this next four Sundays of Advent and during the four weeks of Advent to find some time for personal reflection and opportunities for firm purpose of amendments that the resolve that we may want to make at the end of the secular year Let's make it instead at the end of the Advent season so that the Christmas that we celebrate will be a meaningful welcome and a total embrace of the level of righteousness that God has in mind for us. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray, for even now as we walk amidst passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. And with this I ask, may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, my brothers and sisters.
Awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no air has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry and we sinned because you hid yourself. We transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We pray the Lord's prayer. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us now pray for God's blessing upon us and upon this week. Lord our God, we praise you for your Son, Jesus Christ. He is Emmanuel, the hope of the people. He is the wisdom that teaches and guides us. He is the Savior of every nation. Lord God, let your blessing come upon us as we light the candles of this week. May the reef and its light 
be a sign of Christ's promise to bring salvation to us. May he come quickly and not delay. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. This first candle symbolizes hope. God of light and life, give us hope as we wait for your coming again. When we are tempted to be grateful to have found you while others are lost, send us out into the darkness in search of those who need you most. Amen. Amen. Oh, come now, dear spring, come and share our spirits by the Disperse the gloomy clouds of night And let dark shadows blue to flight Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel Shall come to thee, O Israel O come thou, key of day ever ecclesiastical assembly of Latin America and the Caribbean was held between November 21st to 28th. The event was hosted by CELAM, which is the Episcopal Conference of the Latin Americas. Although the main event was held in Mexico, many of the participants or assembly people as they were referred to participated virtually via Zoom. The event was also live streamed on, on Facebook. I had the pleasure of being a, a representative on the, on the assembly for the, the province of Castries. Myself, along with Deacon Popo, um, Bishop Malzer, Bishop County, and Father Don Chambers, who is the Secretary General of the AC, all participated in a group uh, which was responsible for discerning on the, if you want for the needs or what is of particular importance to the church in the region. This was all done again in a spirit of synodality. And I, for me, I felt that the assembly did bring that spirit to, to life. Uh, it was very interesting to see how people from all over the world, literally all over the world, because in our group, uh, as it was referred to, a discernment group, it was a group of 12 of us with representatives from the Caribbean region, of course, um, St. Lucia, Trinidad, Dominica, Jamaica, uh, Belize, Nicaragua. We also had a few people from the, the USA, um, Canada, and even we had a bishop from uh, Lafia, I think it was. He is an American by birth, but his parents are Latvian and he participated in, uh, in the group. Uh, one thing that was very evident from the assembly is that our region is advanced in terms of preparation for the 2023 Synod of Bishop. The synodality process essentially is not new to us. It is something that we have been practicing for 
quite some time now. The only difference or the only thing in addition, as Pope Francis put it, we need to reach out to the peripherals. That is the people who do not come to church or the people who have stopped coming to church. And that is something that was expressed by many of the delegates. One of the issues that was of particular interest, especially to the delegates from South and Central America, is the inculturation or making the indigenous and the local, bringing the local culture into our faith and, 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 and the church, as they put it, the multiculturalism. And that was very evident. Many, as I said, many of the delegates from particularly the Latin American regions were very interested in that. But it was interesting to see that a lot of the issues that affects us in the English-speaking Caribbean or even those of us within the AEC region, those issues are common to the church all over the world. Um, the the, the, the um, issues of, of dealing with youth and how we get them, how do, how do we engage them, um, the effects of the new social media and uh, the, as, uh, what is also referred to as hyper-connectivity. Uh, how do we address that issue in this new millennia? Um, clericalism. A lot of those issues I found was mentioned by people from all different parts of the region and even the delegates from outside the region who, who were participating. Um, as I said, for me it was a marvelous experience just connecting to other Catholics, people of similar faith from around the world and seeing what we have come. It was truly a synodal experience. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Hail, Guardian of the Redeemer, Spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to you God entrusted His only Son, in you, Mary placed her trust. With you, Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. <laughs> Parecida, trazendo fogo que nos impulsiona a sermos pregadores do evangelho vivo que é Jesus Cristo. Hoje nossos povos claman e a resposta deve ser urgente por um mundo mais humano. Se renova nossa igreja missionária e sinodal. Todo Missionários em saída Todos somos discípulos missionários em saída Todos somos discípulos missionários em saída